even more monitors. In the past, I made a video about how to use the MR18 mixer to get two extra monitors from the headphones output. And I also made a video about how to use the Midas DN4816 O to get more outputs and four extra monitors from that mixer, but you would have to sacrifice effects. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to just get more monitors. 16 mono monitor mixes or eight stereo monitor mixes, and you don't have to sacrifice anything. And you can also do that on your M32 mixer, but with a few more steps. Here's the big idea. Even if you can connect a box to your mixer, mixer to get more XLR outputs, you're not getting any more mix buses because the mixer only has a set number of mix buses. On the MR18, it's six mix buses plus the effects buses, which you have to sacrifice the effects if we want to use them as monitors. And on the M32, you have 16 mix buses, four of which are also effects buses. So practically you have 12 monitor mixes. And so these extra mix buses, where are you going to get them from? Reaper. Now hold on, before you start thinking, oh my computer is not very fast, I don't have the latest and greatest, you don't need the latest and greatest. I have a 2018 Lenovo IdeaPad Intel Core i5 8th generation processor. It's very mediocre and I did what I'm gonna show you on it and I had absolutely zero problem. Get a USB cable, type B to type A and plug this into your mixer and this into your computer. Get all the channels from the mixer to the computer, create mix buses on the computer, then send them out back to the mixer through the USB. And then you're gonna plug the dn 4816 o box to the alternate port and get these mix buses from the computer out to the XLR outputs on that box and to your monitors. Mixer, computer, mixer, monitor. Let me show you first the routing you need to do on the mixer and then we'll dive into Reaper. And even if you've never used Reaper in your life, I'm gonna show you every single step you need to do, so don't worry about it. Go into the MR Edit app and I'll go into the In Out arrows right here to the routing menu and I'll click on the USB Send. And in here by default, you'll have the tap point set to analog, but we don't want that unless you have a very specific reason why you would need your channel to still be on in the monitor, even if you muted it. But for the sake of simplicity, let's just set all the channels to analog plus mute. And if you don't want to do any processing in Reaper, you can set it to post EQ plus mute. I'll never send the compression to the monitor mix because usually it results in a worse performance, especially with singers, they'll end up straining their voice. So let's click here and set it to post EQ plus mute and click on my channels. So channels 1 to 16 and the aux left right are all going out of the mixer through the USB cable into the computer. But we need to get them back from the computer to the mixer. So you might think, Go to the USB returns? No, because in this page, we're assigning the USB channels that are coming from the computer to the actual channels on the mixer. That's not the point we're trying to achieve. So I'll go to the alternate page. And in here, I'll select the tab to be post fader and I'll scroll over until I see USB. And I'll assign alternate one to USB one, two, two, three, four, so now all my inputs from the mixer are going to the computer and getting back to the mixer through the USB and going out of the mixer through the alternate port. And then when you connect the dn 48160 to the mixer, you'll have physical XLR outputs for all these. Let's download Reaper. Reaper. Go to the downloads page and find your operating system and download it. We also need to download an extension for Reaper because by default it doesn't have a traditional mix bus. So we'll go to SWS extension and click here, find your operating system and download it. After that, just install Reaper and the extension. And then you're gonna open Reaper and go to the top right corner and click here to open the preferences. And the audio system will be ASIO and the audio driver will be your mixer driver. Okay, right now I'm using the M32C because that's that's what I have at home. But with the MR18, you'll have the MR18 as your driver. You'll select that. If you don't have it, go to the Midas website, search for Midas consoles and go to the downloads page and then search for the MR18 driver. And you're gonna find it right here, MR18 USB audio driver and download the latest version. After you select the audio driver, you're gonna make sure that inputs are enabled and select the first input you have and select the last input if they are not already selected. Same for the outputs, first output, 
and the last output. Then you're gonna go to the ASIO configuration, click here, go over to the buffer settings. You'll find the input latency and output latency in samples and in milliseconds. So if I select a high buffer, like 1024, you'll see I have 1096 samples of latency on the input, which is 22.83 milliseconds and 1224 samples on the output, which is 25.5 milliseconds. And the round trip latency is both combined. So the time that it takes the audio to get into the computer and back out of the computer is 48.3 milliseconds. It's quite a lot. You can't play live music with that. So the more you go down with the buffer size, the lower the latency. Let's keep going. 64 samples. Okay, I have 2.8 milliseconds on the input and 2.5 on the output. Let's keep going down. 32 samples. You notice the input latency is going down, but the output latency is not going down anymore. And that's because the safe mode is turned on. If I turn this off, here you go. I have 1.5 milliseconds of latency on the output. But this will create a lot of pops and crackles in the audio and it makes it unusable. So it's there for a reason. Keep it on. This will make sure that the output latency doesn't get below 2.5 milliseconds. So at 32 samples, we are getting 2.17 milliseconds on the input and 2.5 on the output, which makes the total latency 4.6 milliseconds. That's great. The average person cannot notice delay if it's below 10 milliseconds. Musicians maybe can. If it's 8 milliseconds, I personally can hear a little bit of delay, but it's not enough to throw me off. I can still play in time, but it's not zero latency. But at four and a half milliseconds, it's unnoticeable. I couldn't notice any delay. So you may want to set it either to 32 samples or 64 samples. The difference between these two is less than a millisecond. So let's close this. Last thing I want to talk about here is the request block size. If this is on, you type in the buffer right here. Let's say 1024 and hit OK, you can see up here the buffer is 1024 samples. If I go back in here and back into the ASIO configuration, this box in Reaper changed the buffer size in the audio driver. I personally don't want that, so I'll uncheck request block size and set the buffer in the driver itself. Let's set it to 64 samples. Close it and hit OK. And you can see it's 64 samples, even though right here I've written 1024. And Reaper is really lightweight. So even if your computer is not that amazing, you can still run it at low latency, no problem. So let's create a mix bus. Reaper by default doesn't have something like that. It has a folder track. But in order to use the folder track, you need to have already recorded audio. Live inputs don't get routed into the folder track. So let's first create a track. I'll double click in an empty space to create a track and go to the extensions and the SWS extension that we just downloaded enables us to create a Q bus, which is a mix bus, basically a monitor bus. So I'll click on Q bus generator and I'll call it monitor one in the bus name right here. And I'll make it pre fader post effect. So if I have any plugins on it, the sound of the plugins will go into the bus, but the fader of the track will not affect the level. And I'll create the Q bus and close this and close that. I'll set the input to my microphone. Hey, hey, test, okay, I have signal. And that signal of the track is going into the monitor bus through the send. So if I remove the send, I have no signal on the monitor bus. I can send it again just by grabbing the route button and pulling it over to the Q bus. I created a send. That's automatically post fader, post band. I want it pre fader and post effects. It's the same in here. You can select the input of the track from here. Click on it. If it's a mono input, you're selected from here. If it's a stereo input, you'll select it from here. And in order for the audio from that track to go into the Q bus, it needs to be armed. So the record button on that track should be on, and then you'll have audio. And as a rule of thumb, I like to set the sends to minus 15, just so that you can hear that it exists in your monitor. But if something is too loud, it wouldn't blow out your ears or the gear. And from here, also, if you have a stereo source, you can decide to send it mono to the bus. So if you click on that button, it will make the send mono and you can invert the polarity if you need to do that and you can mute it. You can also mute it by holding shift and clicking on it. And let's make sure that this monitor doesn't have an input. So I'll go to the input on it and hit none and it will still get audio anyway, but it will not have an input from somewhere else. So however many buses you need, I'll select that one and right click duplicate or if you want you can assign a keyboard shortcut to that to make it faster you can go to the actions up here show action list search for duplicate tracks 
and click on it. And you can add a shortcut. I selected Shift, Alt, and D because that's the same shortcut in Pro Tools. I'm used to that. And hit OK and close this. Now, if I select a track and hit that shortcut, Shift, Alt, D, I will duplicate it. So let me create 16 buses and let me name them properly. One, click on the name. Two, hit Tab to go to the next one. Three. This track is going to all the buses at minus 15, but these buses are not going anywhere yet. I will click on the send for the bus, add new hardware output, and you can see I have the stereo outputs, one, two, three, four. So if I have a stereo monitor, I can use these pairs, or if I go down, I have the mono outputs. So I'll assign output one, mix bus one, and now whatever I send to that bus will go out of USB one. But doing this manually for every track can be tedious, so let's go to the routing matrix. I will hit Alt and R to open the routing matrix, and don't be intimidated by it. The first row right here that has one box here and is empty, and then it has a row, that's for the master output. Leave it alone. Also, the first column right here is also for the master output. Leave it alone. Okay, so you'll start from this row and this column. And as you can see, monitor one, this one, we've assigned to it out one. So if I go all the way here, I can see out one is assigned to monitor one. Okay, so destination is outputs and source is inputs. So I'm going to go ahead and assign monitor two to output two three to three, and you can click and hold and drag and assign them quickly. But my hand was shaky and I created an extra one. So I'm going to hold Alt and click on it to remove it. And if you hover the mouse, it will show you that monitor three is going to out three. Now, if monitor seven was a stereo output, I could do monitor seven and assign it to five and six. By setting it to five, I'm setting it to five and six. I don't do both because now it's going to five and six and six and seven. We don't want that. So let me remove that. Go back here. You can see all the buses have outputs right now. That's great. So let's create all the channels we need. And I'll hit shift and click on all the sends to mute them. And now I'll duplicate the track. Okay, I have 16 channels and the aux. Let's call this aux. And let's call this piano, guitar, drums, bass, piano, Joe, Chris, Karen, Sandy, Joey, one, two, three, four, five, six, five. Just random names. And I'll assign random colors to them also. So I'll select all of them. Right click, track color, set tracks to random colors. Now all the tracks are going to all the buses at minus 15 dB. And all the buses are going to outputs. We still need to assign the inputs of the tracks. So we can either do it from here. Click on input and select if it's a mono input. I'll assign it to one, for example. If it's a stereo input, I can assign it from here. Input stereo. I select three, four, and so on and so forth. Or I can open the routing matrix. Alt R to open the routing matrix. And from here, I can assign the channels that are up here to the inputs that are on the left right here. These are the mono inputs, and if I go down, you can see the stereo inputs. So because you assigned the drums to be 3-4, it's on number 3, and it's taking 3-4 because this is a stereo input. So I can continue like that. I can do bass on input 5, 6, 7. And lastly, I have the aux channel. It's a stereo input, so I'm going to go down. 17, 18, click on it. If I go back here, you can see it's 17, 18 for the aux and all the channels are assigned to inputs. Great, don't forget, in order to hear the sound from the track, you need to have it armed. The record button should be on. Now, if you do want to do some processing in Reaper, let's bring this down. I'll bring the mouse up until I see this kind of up and down arrow and hold the control key and pull it down to see the plugins slots. So I'll click on a track right here and click on all plugins and I'll search for EQ, re-EQ. 
You don't have to use the Reaper EQ. You can use a third-party EQ as long as it's zero latency. And I'll also put a compressor. Maybe in most cases, it would be better not to compress the signal that is going to the monitor because if the musician is playing louder, they need to hear it louder. If they're playing softer, they need to hear it softer. But the audience doesn't need to hear that big of a variation. That's why we use compression. And how do you check how much latency the plugin has? You go down to the effects button on the track and you click Click on it and you'll see a list of plugins that exist on the track. And if you select one of them, you can see right here how many samples of latency it has. This has zero samples of latency. This has zero samples. These plugins are zero latency. So I can use them and they will not add any delay to my sound. Now, if I add something like a limiter, limit, you can see now it does have latency. It's adding 480 samples, but the output latency will be 512 because the buffer size is fixed numbers. You can see 64, 128, 256, 512. Okay, so because the latency of the plugin is 480, it's closest to that one. So the output latency will be that. You don't need to get into the details of this. Just know that this is how you can check if your plugin has latency. And if it does have latency, don't use it because Reaper cannot do latency compensation for live inputs. So I'm gonna hold the Alt button and click on the plugin to remove it from the chain. And if you're taking your inputs from the mixer post EQ plus mute, you don't need to use any processing unless you want to. We're not done yet because we need to find a way to control these monitor mixes. Each musician should be able to control their own mix. So let's go up here to the preferences again and go down all the way until you see control slash OSC slash web and click on it and Add. And here in the control surface mode, I'll select web browser interface. And in the default interface, I'll select more me. That is for the monitors. And that IP address with the port, you'll type it into your phone browser and hit apply right here and OK and OK. And then I'll type this into my phone 192.168.0.1. And column two points. 8080, that's the port I need to type it and hit enter. I'll see this page. And from here, I can select my monitor, click on here. I'll select monitor five. That's for me. And you can see all the tracks with their colors and their name. And I'll unmute. You can see it in Reaper. It unmuted a piano track. For monitor five, unmute the bass on monitor five. And I can change the send level. And this fader right here is not the fader of the track. Let me move over so you can see. I'm on monitor number five. If you look right here, this fader is the hardware send level. Okay, it's not the fader of the track. If you're connected to active speakers and you set the speaker to zero dB, usually you'd need to turn down the fader by about 20 dB. So you can do that here as a safety measure. So let me grab all of these, select all the monitors and grab the fader and turn it down to minus 20. So now they can still have control over their overall level, overall mix volume, but you will not risk blowing out your speakers or someone's ears. And each musician can change their send levels. And of course, all the phones need to be connected to the same router that is connected also to the computer that is hosting Reaper. And that router needs to have internet. Without internet, it doesn't work because it's a web page. It's not an actual application. But you can save that web page. You can click on the three dots on the top, add to home screen, and you can call it something. Personal monitor, add, add. Right now, I have it right here. So if I click on that icon, I'll go into the personal monitor and select my monitor bus and do whatever I want. Now you did everything you want to do. You'll save this project as a template. So go to file and project templates, save project as a template, and I'll save it on my desktop monitors. Hit save. And now when I open a new project, I can tell Reaper to open it from that template. So I'll go to the preferences again, top right corner and go up right here to project and in here. I will click browse and find where I put that file. Monitors, click on it, hit apply, okay. Now if I close Reaper and open it again, I'll have everything, okay? I don't need to set anything again. And the really cool thing about Reaper is that it keeps the record buttons on. Try doing that with Pro Tools, good luck with that. <laughs> Pro Tools, every time you close the session and open it again, it will turn off 
all the record buttons and the input monitoring buttons. But with the Reaper, it keeps them on. So now it's literally just plug and play. Just open your laptop, plug it into the mixer, open Reaper. Here you go. You have everything set. Now, before buying the output box, you can actually try this out to see if it will work out for you and if that's something that you want to do. So go to the mixer, in, out, the routing menu, and go to the aux out. And these are the physical XLR outputs on your mixer. And by default, they are assigned to the buses. So I'll scroll over right here and assign them to USB, one, two, three, four, five. And you can try this with Reaper and see if you can play live with it, if your computer is good enough for it. And then you're either like, yes, I can do this, this is workable, or no, I can't work with this. Usually if you want more mix buses, you would have to get a bigger mixer that has more channels just to get the mix buses. But if you only have a few channels, but you have a lot of destinations to send audio to, I think this is a great solution. We're done with the M18, but I'll show you very quickly how to do that on the M32 because it's slightly different. If you go to the routing menu in the M32 and you go to the alternate page, you will see that there's no... USB or card out. You cannot send any of the card channels from the alternate output. And also in the out page, it's the same thing. You cannot send a card channel out of here. So I'll go to the AS50 page. I'll assign my AS50 outputs to be the card 1 to 16. And then on the alternate page, I will assign what I have assigned on the out page. Change the tap to post fader and mix bus 1, 2, and I'll have my 1516 as the main left right. So now when you plug the dn 4816o box to the alternate of your DL32 stage box, you're gonna get your usual outputs from that Midas box, not from the stage box. From the stage box, you'll get the card outputs that are coming from Reaper. And that's it. I was really excited to share this solution with you. If you're still watching till now and you found this helpful, make sure to hit the like button and I'll see you in the next video.